Baby, I want to hold you down and have my way with you. Hmm. No. Hmm. Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> Nailed it. It's Christmas time in the city. Unless feminists are running amok and ruining everything. I'm really gonna film this entire thing sitting down. I just wanted to show off the, the shirt. You don't know what this is? Do a search for oh hi Mark. So a radio station in Cleveland, Ohio has pulled one of the most iconic Christmas songs ever. Baby It's Cold Outside has been pulled because somebody from the hashtag me too movement called in and said hey the song sounds a little rapey don't you think and the lady at the booth goes yeah it does sound rapey huh click wdok 102 radio playing christmas music all the time has pulled baby it's cold outside excuse me one second <laughs> thanks for your concern i'm actually i'm much better now i'm good i'm good uh, yeah, but anyways, uh, callers from the hashtag MeToo movement actually called and got the song pulled and the radio station was okay with it. Uh, the midday host, Desiree, said, uh, you know, if you read the lyrics, it's not a situation that I would want my daughter to be in. What situation? What? In, in, a, in a relationship where, where two people like each other? In, in, a, in a marriage or, or in being engaged to somebody that you're affectionate with? And you're like, yeah, Flash, the song sounds a little rapey. It sounds that way because we our morals and our values have been distorted. This song was never intended to be rapey. It was never about date rape. Okay? We have done that to the song. We have distorted what it was originally was. Okay? And I'm going to hit you with a lot of facts today. So sit down, buckle up. We're going for a ride. <laughs> so... Sandra of the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, th thank you for your work, Sandra. You're probably actually dealing with real victims there. But she said uh, the main character in the song is saying no, and what they're saying is does no really mean yes? Yes, that is exactly what they're saying. It's exactly what they're saying, but it's not what you think, okay? The main character is not saying no to him because she doesn't want to stay and doesn't want to do things. She likes him just as much as he likes her, and she's infatuated with him just as he is infatuated with her, but she could not stay the night because at that time, societal norms said that it's not okay for a woman to spend the night at a man's house. They couldn't do anything together. They, they could barely kiss and hold hands. She wants to stay. He wants her to stay, but they're afraid of what people are going to think, or she is at least. And he's trying to help her relax. That is all that's going on here. It, 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 it wasn't going to be a Bill Cosby. There was, date rape wasn't even a thing back then. We'll get, we'll get to that. Now, the main character actually hints at this, and I'm going to play you a clip here. It's right after the most controversial part of the song, which is the drink that is clearly roofied. It's roofied. It's not roofied. Out there. Hey, what's in this drink? Caps to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like stars right now. Huh? Uh, did you see it? Huh? What's in this drink? He sings a little more. I wish I knew how. He sings a little more. To break this spell. As she looks lovingly into his eyes and shows that she desires him just as badly as he desires her, but they can't act upon it because it is frowned upon at that time. So this song is actually the opposite of what people think it is. It's actually a very progressive song that hints at what feminism is all about, right? That a woman should be able to do what she wants, when she wants, where she wants, and not be judged for it. It's actually a very progressive song. However, this next lady from Huff Post would actually disagree. <laughs> Recently, we've woken up to the song's more date rapey undertone. Ugh, oh, what a bimbo. Oh, gosh. She has no clue what she's talking about. She has no clue. And why isn't her hair pink? I feel like her hair should be pink. Shouldn't it be pink? But anyway, she goes on to babble about how, you know, over the years, 
they've tried to reverse the roles to make the song okay, as she hints in this next clip. Now, in an effort to make the song more palatable, the gender roles are increasingly being reversed. Like most recently with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Lady Gaga, or even Michael Buble and Miss Piggy. She's right. It probably would make it a little less rapey if the roles were reversed. I mean, check out this scene with uh, Betty Garrett and uh, Red Skelton. Neighbors might but baby, be. it's bad out there. Say what's in these no trees. No pants to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like stars. To right break now. this bell. I yeah, she's right. It's a lot better that way. A little less rapey. Gosh, that was progressive. What was that, 10, 20, 30 years later, right? When they shot, no, wrong, wrong. That is Neptune's daughter. It's the same movie as the very first scene I showed you with the drink. Same exact movie. They reversed the roles later in the movie and this bimbo is going off about how it'd be so much better if they reversed the roles. They did that in the original film because it wasn't intended to be rape. In fact, this one actually ends a little more rapey. Check it out. Implied. If I caught pneumonia and died, really can't get stay. over that old out, oh, baby. But it's cold outside. <laughs> Red Skelton, we are here for you. That man is a victim. He is clearly a victim. I, I don't think Red Skelton mind all that much. Uh, Betty Garrett was pretty cute, so. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that looked a lot more like rape. The really funny part about this is nobody did their homework. It, it paints a more innocent picture, doesn't it? I mean, same movie, same song, different scene, roles are reversed. Yeah, it's way more innocent. Because it's not about rape. It's not. It's about people that like each other doing things that they probably shouldn't do. Okay? Yeah, but Flash, what about the drink? What about the drink? What about the drink? Like the woman in the, the song doesn't know that he's given her alcohol to lower her inhibitions? I mean, alcohol is a pretty distinct smell and it, lowering people's inhibitions goes all the way back to biblical ages, right? It, it, alcohol is known for taking away people's reservations to do things. I mean, it's, it's not like people think she got roofied, right? What's in this drink? Could the seasonal scumbag date rape alarm be going off any louder right now? This feels less romantic date and more nightmare starring Bill Cosby. Oh, <laughs> they do. People think she was roofied. Oh my gosh, they think a roofie was involved. It's gonna be a long day. Oh, excuse me. This is the dumbest argument yet, and I'm gonna explain why, but first we have to dive deeper into the history of the writer, which is fair, because you're not just calling a song rapey, you're calling a songwriter a rapist. Okay, so let's dive in. Who, who was Frank Lesser? Okay, Google. Who was Frank Lesser? According to Wikipedia, Frank Henry Lesser was an American songwriter who wrote the lyrics and music to the Broadway musicals Guys and Dolls and how to succeed in business without really trying, among others. Okay, Google. I love you. Thanks. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> ah. She wants it. Nah, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not going to rape the Google home, okay? Let it go. Uh, it wasn't the answer I was looking for though. I was really hoping she was gonna be like, Frank Lesnar is a rapist. No, uh, let's, let's dive into who he really was. So Frank Lesnar wrote Baby It's Cold Outside in 1944 for his wife, Lynn Garland, and him to sing at dinner parties. Now back in the day when performers would go to dinner parties or you know in Hollywood or whatever, they were expected to perform. It was kind of like bringing a cake or something or sometimes a snacks or whatnot. It, it was a courteous thing to do. Okay. Now this goes on for about four years where they sing these, this song at the end of a dinner party kind of signified that it was time for everybody to go and everybody loved it. Now in 1949, Frank Lesnar winds up selling the rights to the song to MGM for the movie, the romantic rape comedy, Neptune's Daughter. Okay, and this is in 1949. Now, Lynn Garland, his wife, was actually upset that he sold it from what I, everything I read. And he, it was kind of a special song be, between them. And it was their, you know, their way to get into Hollywood parties and stuff like that. It's just, she was kind of actually upset with him. 
but she felt like it was their song. It was a romantic theme between the two of them. Now, he wrote the song in 1944, and he sold the song in 1949. Now, this is why these numbers are important. So, before Rufies were called Rufies, they were called Rufinol, right? It's the actual name for it. Before it was called Rufinol, it was called benzodiazepines. Now, benzodiazepines weren't even identified until 1955. They were identified by Hoffman LaRoche. I think I'm saying his last name right. Hoffman LaRoche, okay? He didn't even market these until 1960. Okay, so benzodiazepines weren't even around at that time. So you see, it wasn't even possible for the song or the movie to refer to date rape. It wasn't around at that time. Okay, now I, I, don't, I don't think this had ill intent on it. I don't think this is a bunch of people who are trying to ruin Christmas. You know, I, I, it's funny, I'm not even religious, but all that comes to mind is, you know, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. I think this is just a bunch of stupid people overreacting. You know, the most frustrating part about all this is that it's under the disguise of the hashtag MeToo movement, which I, I'm sorry, but I feel like they're not real feminists sometimes. Like feminists have done some great things over the years. They've done some fantastic things. And recently they've done some really stupid things. Okay, like it, it's not like the hashtag MeToo movement. They're not, they're not Malala. They didn't get shot on their school bus for trying to spread education, but you know, shot by the Taliban. You know, they're, 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 there are a bunch of rich people who complained about Harvey Weinstein and started this movement that you shouldn't be sexually assaulted, which is, which is a good thing to a degree, but it just hasn't produced a lot of good results. Like, where is the hashtag Me Too movement on the, the situation in Iran where, where women are being covered from head to toe in a hijab and they don't want to be? Where are you guys on that? Why aren't you spreading awareness about that? Where are you guys on, on, on sex slavery? Like why is the hashtag Me Too movement not more involved in sex slavery? It's all around the world. Women who are actually drugged and chained to beds so that can, they can be raped over and over again. Where are you guys on that? Hashtag Me Too. Where are you? No, you're b***ing about Christmas songs and wearing pussy hats. Like you are the most unproductive bunch I have ever seen. It's frustrating. It frustrates me. Okay, I think feminism is great, but you guys need to step up your game and do some better stuff. So, so why is it important? Why is it, you guys, I gotta be honest, man. If we don't put our foot down and stop the spreading of lies, they're just gonna keep going. I mean, if you, if you don't believe me, throw a, throw a okay symbol on your social media. See how that goes. I mean, that has nothing to do with white supremacy, but it blew up everywhere. We have to shut stupid crap down or it's just gonna keep going going just shut it down okay next time somebody tells you like yeah baby it's cold outside it's about rape explain to them that it's not if you can't explain send them to this video or send them to a video that's similar okay it's it's ridiculous now in light of the christmas season i would like to suggest other songs that need to be banned in time for christmas because of sexual assault <laughs> Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Really? Really? Was it your heart or was it a sexual assault? Nobody knows. It needs to be banned. Hmm, Santa Claus is coming to town. Hmm, what do you mean he's coming? Hmm, what do you mean he's coming to town? Hmm, hmm. Watches you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Clearly, Santa's a stalker. Sexual deviant. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, right? What do you mean all the way? Are you trying to go all the way? Nobody's going all the way today, my friend. He needs to go. Mm. I saw mommy kissing Santa, right? Saw mommy kissing Santa in the mistletoe. Maybe Santa was forcing her, hmm? Did anybody think about that? Hmm? Maybe mommy didn't want it. And then her poor child's gonna run and tell dad that she was kissing Santa when really she's the victim here. It's horrible. Santa was forced. I mean, clearly Santa Claus is coming to town. It's very stalkerish. You know he's forcing her. You know it. Ugh. This makes me sick. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Bunch of white substance that changes consistency. I'm not going there. You know what I mean. Um, do they know it's Christmas in Africa? If you have ever listened to the lyrics of this, okay, you will know there's a theme where somebody's crying or looking out the window and they're afraid to go out. They're, they're dreading what's going on in the world and whatnot. Clearly that's a victim, okay? I don't think we should be, you know, portraying that more. That's terrible. 
Okay, and the, the last but not least, this one just gets me, it, rocking around the Christmas tree. If a Christmas tree is not the most like secret way to disclose that they're really talking about the male anatomy, I don't know what is. Is it really a Christmas tree that you want us rocking around? Is that what you want? I doubt it, perverts.